are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. The situation of temporary foreign workers has been in the news. We will talk to the Executive Director of the Migrant Workers Alliance for Change about their lobbying efforts, Sayed Hussain. But first, some news headlines. Canada calls on the UN to release report on Uyghurs. Rohingya community in Kitchener marks Genocide Remembrance Day. Director of the Coalition of Muslim Women Injured in a Car Crash. Indian Muslims protest blasphemous comments by lawmaker. And now the details. Bob Ray, Canada's ambassador to the UN, is demanding the release of the UN's report on China's alleged genocide against its Muslim Uyghur population in East Turkestan, reports a media source. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, told reporters yesterday that she requires time to integrate information from her visit to East Turkestan in May and to review Beijing's comments. Bachelet says she is facing immense pressure from all sides. Ray says there's no excuse for not publishing the report. China has detained nearly 2 million Uyghurs in re-education centres or de-radicalisation camps Human rights experts call these camps a place for ongoing genocide. A small group of Rohingya refugees marked the fifth Rohingya Genocide Remembrance Day yesterday in their centre in Kitchener, Ontario. According to Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, 300 Rohingya refugees were resettled between 2006 and 2010, reports a media source. Mayu Ali, a Rohingya refugee who came to Canada last year, is worried about how little attention the crisis is getting from global powers. Last month, Canada reaffirmed its commitment to the Rohingya crisis by supporting Gambia in its genocide case against Myanmar at the International Court of Justice. Recently, Canada announced a $288 million funding over three years for its response to the Rohingya crisis. Fawzia Masha, the executive director of the Coalition of Muslim Women Kitchener-Waterloo Region, has been critically injured in a car crash during her visit to the United Arab Emirates on Wednesday, reports the organization. Masha was immediately rushed to hospital. As of now, she remains in the ICU. Masa is a renowned community leader who we have interviewed on this show. She advocates the causes of inclusivity, equity and peace. Masa is a key player in establishing the coalition's hate reporting system to combat hate crimes in the region. She has been calling on politicians and law enforcement agencies to track hate incidents. Overnight protests continued in Hyderabad city against the bail of a lawmaker belonging to the ruling, the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party who was arrested for making derogatory remarks about Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Thakur Raja Singh, a BJP member of the State Legislative Assembly, was apprehended on Tuesday morning after multiple cases were registered against him, demanding his arrest. On Monday, Singh released a video showing him making derogatory comments about the Prophet. Late Tuesday night, Singh walked out of jail after a local court granted him bail. Jamiat Ulama i Hind, India's largest socio religious Muslim organization, called the lawmaker's derogatory remarks very shameful and shocking. The BJP ordered the suspension of the lawmaker from the party Tuesday, pending an inquiry. And that's it for the news. Last week, the Federal Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, Minister Sean Fraser, has called for changes to Canada's temporary foreign worker program. To talk about how that might or might not impact migrant workers, we have with us Sayed Hussain, the Executive Director of the Migrant Workers Alliance for Change. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, migrant workers, let's just do a little bit of basics in case people in the audience are not familiar with the situation of migrant workers. Are migrant workers the same kinds of people that Sean Fraser is talking about, Minister Sean Fraser, when he's talking about temporary foreign workers? 
So each year in Canada, 1.2 million temporary permits are issued. These are people on work permits, which are employer dependent. Those are temporary foreign workers. It also includes international students, people who are refugee claimants but are working. Mm. Uh, as a comparison, there's only about 450,000 people who get permanent residency. So three times as many people as permanent immigrants come here on temporary permits who work here who are often unable to stand up for their rights, who cannot get access to healthcare, who cannot get access to full education, who don't have access to be uh, with their families. And these are migrant workers, and there are many different subcategories, mm. but in general, that's who migrant workers are. And right now we have a historic opportunity to create full and permanent immigration status for them. So we'll hopefully have a chance to get into some of those issues. Uh, but you mentioned a figure, I think you said 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. the temporary work permits and uh, are these time bound so these are temporary work or study permits some of them are time bound so some of them are might be 30 days permits six month permits eight month permits so when you're a farm worker you might be here for eight months of the year if you're on a study permit maybe one to four or six years uh, if you're a refugee claimant it's not time bound it's until a decision is made on your application but what's same about them is that one is they are temporary and because you are temporary, you do not have access to the same rights and protections as Canadian citizens. What uh, is the major challenge that your organization is working to sort of fix now? What we see is that when people don't have access to permanent residency, they cannot stand up for their rights at work, they face exploitation, they're excluded from basic and essential services like healthcare, post secondary, even elementary education. You know, when you are going to, when a boss is mistreating you, and if you speak up, the boss can deport you, can make you homeless, can uh, uh, turn you over, uh, can in some way impact your future, then you're going to have a very difficult time speaking up. So what we've been calling for and what the federal government is about to work on is to give permanent resident status to every person in the country that doesn't have it. Right? This is a fundamentally different immigration system. If everyone came into the country with permanent resident status, this might seem drastic but actually was the reality even just 25 years ago mm -hmm. you know 20 years ago there were only 60,000 temporary work permits issued in canada now mm -hmm. it's over 700 percent increase the study permits have, have ballooned so we have seen canada shift quietly towards a system of temporary immigration which is exploitation mm -hmm. and we are saying it needs to be a permanent system where everyone in the country has the same rights as everyone else and is that why you call that a historic opportunity? It is a historic opportunity because never before, in particular, when we talk about undocumented people, people with absolutely no permits. So these are people who came on work permits or study permits or on refugee claimants, and at one point or the other were not able to apply to renew their permit or the government refused to renew the permit and they stayed. Now, there are half a million such people in the country, 500,000, and there is no ability, they live here, they work here, of course, because they can't get any services. They pay rent, they pay taxes on all purchases, but they can't get a driver's license. They can't go to the hospital. They can't, you know, have their families be with them. They can't stand up at work. They can't do so many things. And now, historically, Canada is considering giving those people papers, right, regularizing them. And the only question in front of us is how many people will be uh, given these immigration rights? How many people will be regularized? And so we are saying that no one should be left behind. Permanent residency is the mechanism through which rights are accessed and everyone deserves equal rights and fairness. Will that be a major overhaul? Does that mean that, that the people will just simply apply for permanent residency and there won't be temporary foreign workers? So the regularization would apply to people who are undocumented, who have no immigration papers, right? So the temporary foreign workers is a separate stream. We're also saying that people who are in the temporary foreign worker program get permanent resident status. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, so how the specifics of the program will work, you know, what will the application be, requirements, what will the process be, is to be determined. The decision in front of us right now is how many people. So the question is, do we want everyone in the society to have equal rights? Or do we want most people to continue to be exploited? And I believe that any fair-minded person believes that everyone should have equal rights. No one should be exploited based on where they are born. No one should be exploited or mistreated or denied life-saving health care simply because they could not renew their work permit or their study permit or their refugee claim. And 
this seems obvious to you. Is there a lot of pushback? There's often a narrative about foreigners coming and taking our jobs, quote unquote. Do you struggle also with that kind of pushback? I think that this is a kind of an American idea, right? Like our European idea. We know, for example, currently in Canada, there are unemployment rates are very low and there's a lot of jobs, right? So it's not a question of, you know, uh, immigrants are coming and taking our jobs. And what do we even mean by ours? You know, I live in Toronto where 51% of the city was born outside of the country. Mm. I don't think all 51% of us came and took jobs, right? Like and you can't take a job. Jobs are given and also jobs are created. I think the core thing is this. There are definitely certain jobs that mostly migrants do, like agriculture, like um, domestic work, often uh, delivery work. And the reason for that is, is that those wages and work conditions are incredibly poor mm. and many other people are not willing to do them. The solution is to improve the wages and working conditions of all residents of Canada, all workers in Canada, regardless of status, whether you're a citizen or a migrant. We need to improve the living conditions and working conditions of everyone. All of us deserve a good home. All of us deserve to be with our family. All of us deserve to live uh, with safety and dignity. And if that was the case, and if there are, you know, so the issue is not our foreigners stealing our jobs. The issue is that we have a system in which actually thousands of migrant workers are indentured. They're tied to the employer and they're not allowed to change those jobs. And as a result, employers don't have any in incentive to improve those working conditions. Well, if we give everyone citizenship and they start being able to walk away from a bad job, there will actually be this huge, enormous improvement in living and working conditions of all people. So give us citizenship. I do want to ask you about that in a minute, but just a brief uh, bracket, I suppose. Do you have any statistics on how many Muslims might be part of that 1.2 million that you mentioned earlier? So it's 1.2 million people on temporary permits and then half a million are, who are undocumented. That's 1.7 million. Uh, I do not have statistics on which countries people are coming from or their um, faith backgrounds. But we do know that a lot of people are coming from countries in the global south, a lot mm -hmm. of which is Muslim countries, right? We, whether we talk about any of the continents, um, you know, Poor and working class people from the global south that come here are often uh, racialized and also Muslim. I mean, a lot of our members who are Muslims are actually Indonesians, who are Indonesian care workers. Uh, a lot of other members who are Muslims are coming as refugees. Um, and other people organize with other people. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a topic that I hear much about amongst these sort of mosque-based Muslims uh, trying to advocate for uh, good well-being for migrant workers. I think right now, more than ever before, I've been doing this for a long time, there is a historic opportunity. And I think it's important for all of us in the mosques, in you know wherever people gather at the workplace and in school, to talk about how we have this opportunity to fundamentally end a historic injustice. If tomorrow half a million people, you know, just not, I'm not even about the 1.7 million, if half a million people could suddenly be able to come above ground, to be with their families, get access to healthcare, get decent jobs. That would change everything. I mean, undocumented people already pay taxes, but if they got papers, their employers would also have to pay taxes. That would add $1.1 billion with a B in the Canadian economy in just the first year at a minimum. That's the minimum. These people work for minimum wage. Some will work for higher. So this is a question that impacts all of us. There is a historic opportunity that hasn't happened before. And so we're calling on people to go sign petitions and our website is statusforall.ca. We're asking people to march in the streets, to write letters to Prime Minister Trudeau and Immigration Minister Fraser saying, we believe, you know, as people of faith, as believers uh, in a fair and just society. And we know that when someone doesn't have citizenship, it's not fair or just. So please act on it. Uh, very soon, we're going to be issuing a letter and uh, that uh, not us, but a number of interfaith groups are going to be issuing. And we would love to have the support of Muslim organizations to sign it, which will be an interfaith letter calling for a uh, regularization and status. And well, unfortunately, we're out, out of time. Other. I'm sorry to cut you. We're out of time. But uh, you're raising important issues. We'll hopefully come back to this on another interview. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.
Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please share, like, and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.